gentlemen, you are actually joining me for a very special edition of the Positive Wrestling Podcast. My name is Stephen Baker, a.k.a. Leon, and uh, this is my first produced episode. Thanks to High Tension Wrestling uh, Podcast Network, HTW, we have ourselves, we have producers. We have people who are doing things for us now. This is great. I don't even have to worry about the post. This is phenomenal. But we're not here about me. We're not here about that. We're not here about anything in between. We're here for one person. One positive influence in the wrestling world, who I've actually grown to really enjoy and uh, and care for as a person, and uh, it's the man with one thousand one jobs, though he can't hold them. Jordan Rowe. It's yeah, good. I like that. Though he can't hold them. <laughs> he can't hold them though. What's going on, man? How are you doing today? Good, man. You know, it's a nice day outside, so I decided to come out here for this little oh. little TV show today. I was going to say, man, yeah, I'm stuck in my room, but uh, that's just because my I, I can't bring my computer out there, but it is what it is. Um, no, nah, man, so, like, I got to ask you right off the bat. You've been getting involved. I know you've been training or at least trying to, you know. I mean, you've run popcorn stands. You've probably owned a movie theater here and there. What has been your favorite job so far, your jo- your favorite oh. job in, inside inside uh, Test of Strength? My favorite job inside of Test of Strength, uh, probably probably being a fry guy because I didn't even know I was a fry guy until Kincaid told me I was. So that so was wait, cool. Yeah. I got I to gotta ask real quick, though, before we jump at any, any anywhere. Fry guy, how did that happen? Like, what, what was the case with that? Um, I bought an order of fries at Ryder Smokehouse. I sat down to watch the show, and then here come Kincaid. And, yeah, that was the, that was the deal. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I guess I'm hired. Kincaid <laughs> happens to smoke you a lot from what I realized. So he I, catches me all the time. He gave me my first job. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We had the uh, I forgot you you were uh, what were you Mr. 2K and 3K? Is that what it was? I was selling Mike Skyros's TV shirt. I mean uh, fucking t-shirts. Oh my god. Can man. I swear on this? Um yeah, sure, why not? Okay, 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 okay. I mean I swear uh, I mean if viewer discretion advised, we swear it, it'll be fine. <laughs> But um, yeah, man. So you've obviously been around a little bit. You know, you've uh, you've gotten to know a bunch of people around the area. Who would you say some of your favorites are that you've seen coming out of the scene so far? Um, oh man, I got a lot. I mean, some of them I train with, so I feel like it's not really fair. So no, people, that, you train people that I don't train with. Um, I, I was a big fan of Casanova before he got he got signed. Oh, uh, I really like JT Dunn. Um, I'm a big fan of. I, I don't know where he's from, but I like Lee Moriarty. I don't think if he. I don't know if he's from New England. I don't think he's a Northeast dude, but Lee Moriarty is, is legit. Yeah, he's, he's, he's he's on the, he's on that pedestal to get called up sooner rather than later. Yeah, bro, he's he's definitely tough. I like a lot of the technical stuff, so like he's definitely a, a guy that I like a lot. I like Mike Skyros a lot. Yeah, Skyros is the man. Um, yeah, I, I was a big fan of Max Caster too. Currently. You, you, you're a fan of all these people who are bound to be signed or already signed. Yeah, so that's bro, it's, nasty, it's, man. What um, uh, if, if you got to go with dudes who you train with though, I don't, I don't mind you. Over, like, who you train with? Um, Sammy, bro. I think Sammy is so good. I like watching him wrestle. Like every time he's wrestling, I got to make sure that I'm watching. Sammy Diaz, yeah, Sammy Diaz. If anyone out there doesn't know who Sammy Diaz is, I suggest you check him out because that dude should be way in way more places than he is. Same thing with like Nick Skyrim. Every, that every dude, time I watch him wrestle. It's just like I feel like I learned something, so it's it's great. I think Eli's coming along really well. Elijah Six. Oh, yeah, Elijah Six is really good. You, again, another guy for anyone listening. Elijah Six is one of those dudes who, um, you know, has that great cocky heel persona, but like he, it's not. It doesn't feel like a persona. It doesn't feel like he's acting. It feels like that's Eli. You know what I mean? Like that's. It's like being with him in the car. Sometimes he he start cutting promos, and I'm like, oh snap! Like, is this Eli or is this? Yeah. He's six. Yeah, he's, he's good. He, he has a good, like, he can flip it. Yeah, he, he can he really it. can. So it's, it's crazy. A lot of people have, like, a, like a, I see people get ready to, like, go out and they got to, like, get into the zone. He just walks out there and he's Elijah Six. So, like, I feel like that's real cool. I, I feel like Eli is just Elijah Six in general. Like, yeah, I'm pretty just, sure. That's, like, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me and Elijah, you know, me and Elijah, and uh, I was saying it yesterday, me, Elijah, and Joe, we play Apex a lot together. Yeah. And, He's just Elijah Six. Like that's just I think that's probably why it works because it's yeah, just him. Sure. But man, he's yeah, he's really good too. I agree. Um yeah, uh, waves and curls, they're oh, fucking yeah. they're great. I love watching them. They get the crowd into it, bro. They're they're just they're just they, good at what they do. They have probably one of the best 
for a tag team charisma, like generally, like their, their charisma is insane off the charts. Like when they first started, funny story. I don't know if uh, if I should be telling this, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Uh, Trey, when he first came in, he was actually uh, my my squire for hire because I <laughs> my squire. So like I got a picture. I'm never going to post it unless he lets me, but I got a picture of him in the red squire shirt. And uh, dude, I tell you something, Trey is the only person to ever, and I mean ever make me break character in a, re- in, a, in, a in the middle of a show like he was so funny and like it was literally the dumbest thing in the world but like we would just he would mess up and mess up and mess up and that was the point of it and i would just get you know increasingly angry with him every week but there was one thing that he said and i said i'm mad that i don't remember exactly what he said but like as soon as he said it i literally started laughing and i was on the microphone i stopped the king voice i was like just just go I was like, just go. <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. He's such a funny dude. Yeah, bro. He's and, so funny. He's got a lot of personality. Yeah. Uh, Jalen uh, was one of those people who I was, uh, especially in the beginning, you noticed how Trey had the charisma, Jalen had the move set. And now I feel like they're finally mixing it all up together and becoming, like, very similar in a good way. So, like, I'm happy to see that. Yeah, Waves and Curls is coming along real well as a tag team, too. Oh yeah. Every week I see them at XWA. They're coming up with some new stuff. They're just they're getting better every week. They, like okay. Pylon King, all those PAPW guys are really yeah. coming along well. Except uh, for Flash. Flash, obviously. Except for Flash. I mean, Flash is you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's Flash. He's Flash. He's Flash. But no, Flash is good too. Yeah, dude. I was saying yesterday. I was talking to um, I was talking to Justin about you guys. You know, Lucas Chase, and um, I'm sure a few of you listen. I know. I know a few of you listen. And I was just saying like how insane it is the athleticism that all of you knew. Like, I feel like I'm like uh, the old dog and I've only been here four years. So like, that's bad for me. Like, I'm like, these guys are good and this is not good for me. I mean, it's a good thing, but it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh man. Every week I'm like sitting there watching in the back and somebody comes up with some new shit that's just over the top. Like, yeah. Eli comes and hits the, the sunset flip over the ropes. That was- and, like, I'm like, that was sick. I loved that. I, was, I didn't even expect, I saw the clip of that and I'm like, I didn't even know he could do that. So, he tells me, he's like, you know what, bro? Like, I'm tired of people thinking like, I can't flip. So I'm going to do a flip. <laughs> I'm like, all right, word. He goes out there and fucking does it and everybody pops. I'm like, oh, wow, bro. Yeah, that was <laughs> it was a hell of a spot, honestly. That was nuts. Um, yeah. All right, so let me ask you right back to kind of the core of what got you into wrestling. Was there, a, do you, was there a time you remember that, like, really brought you to it? So as long as I remember, I've always been watching wrestling. So I don't have, like, a story of, like, a, like something I've seen that, like, made me, like, oh, like, this is it. Like, right. I just remember every Friday I'd be either in Blockbuster getting a new WWE DVD or I'm watching like SmackDown. So like every Friday I would go to Blockbuster with my mom and we'd get like a movie and a, and a snack. So I'd go and I'd pick up some random wrestling tape that i never seen before and I'd just start watching. And I feel like that's really when I became a fan on my own. Yeah. But like my family always watched wrestling. Like my uncles were big on Lucha Libre. And like they used to just like drink beer and watch wrestling, and I was just watching shit with them. So yeah, I just always been around it. So it's just oh, yeah. I always wanted to do. And I amateur wrestled a little bit in high school and college, so it's just I don't know. I just felt like it was right. <laughs> it's just a natural fit at this point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, was there anyone that stood out to you? Like, like I mean, I know you. So you obviously been training for a bit now. Like, do you have any people who like really, you know, stick out as um? Someone you try to like mold yourself after in a way, like you know, like people that you kind of go off. Yeah, now it's like weird because like before, yeah, like, like I was always a fan of like Randy Orton when I was a kid, or like yeah. like Kurt Angle, uh, Chris Benoit. So I was always fans of like really like 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 shooty guys. Right. But, like now I feel like I try to do like more like like Rey Mysterio type shit, and like I don't know, I try to be like a little bit more exciting than just like like grapples to the ground and stuff. So. It's no, been, I, it's been I, fun trying to find a good like mix of the two. Well, I noticed, you know, we've we've talked about it before, like uh, personally, where it's like, you know, for a small dude, you're like, I want to do the power moves, and like, yeah. I, like I want to see you, like I've seen you throw some t bones and throw some stuff in there before, you know what I'm saying? And like, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, this is this is cool to see him, but like at the same time, I'm like, your athleticism, I'm gonna leave it up where it is. Is I, I've said it to you multiple times, something like unreal. Like yeah, you- of course, it's been a thing. Like I, I just gotta stop being like, I just gotta stop being a punk, bro. You gotta like, stop being I'll scared, get to the man. Top rope, and instead of like doing something that like I know I can do, like sometimes I'm like I don't know something cool, I just fucking like elbow splash and land on my feet. <laughs> and, like 
<laughs> it'll be the fucking worst thing ever. I'll it's tell you, just- man, as soon as you get out of your own head, you're going to be like the craziest high flyer. Like, I don't think anyone understands yet, and you, they will in time, but like, you'll see. Jordan is probably one of the most athletic dudes, probably the most athletic wrestler I've ever met in person. And he's only been doing it, what, maybe a year, year and some change now? Yeah, a year and some change. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Like, I mean, you have you, – you're probably, like like I said, the most natural athlete I think I've met in a locker room. And I'm, I'm very, very intrigued to see how the next couple of years go for you because I think it's going to be something crazy. I really do. Yeah, it's helped a lot. Like, training was slick. Like, uh, as soon as I got in there and I was like, doing regular shit, it would just become like a thing where he would just like see something and then he'd just be like, oh, try this. And yeah. Do it. And then like everybody in the class would try to do it. I feel like it's been cool. I feel like, I, I don't know. I don't want to like, like uh, pat my own back too much, but I feel like it's motivated everybody else to like try new shit. Well, that's good like, though. Everybody's I mean, competitive. So, you know, I do something and everybody wants to like try it. And then we make like a whole class out of just doing something cool. So it's pretty pretty no absolutely i mean that's the thing like slick once like I've, I've, I've wrestled slick a few times now and you know every time i work him he's got he's got such a great mind and like the fact that he's training and he's been around forever now you know and um the fact that he's training all you dudes and i've actually told slick personally like the one thing that i will give every single one of you guys credit for that trained with slick is that you guys respect and your humbleness in general when you hit a locker room is off the charts yeah. i mean when you get when you get comfortable you guys become you and that's great and you should but, like, right off the bat, it's all handshake, 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 thank you, thank you. Th-. I'm like, these guys are great. You know what I mean? Not one bad thing to say about any of you guys who came from over there. Like, yeah, S- Slick's great, man. He's, he's I don't know, his mind is crazy. Like, he can see you do something as simple as, like, like Richie did, like, a like a spin kick one, one practice. Just, like, something that he learned from karate back in the day. And Slick will make a whole spot just, like, highlighted on this on this spin kick that he doesn't even connect because he's a bad guy. It was, like... Yep. It's just something crazy. He'll see you do anything, and he can make it into a part of the match. Dude, yeah. yeah he's Slick, crazy. Slick actually, um, I'm pretty sure it was a tag match, which actually you know of. The uh, It was me and Dan DeMan versus uh, Slick and Evie De La Rosa. That was the first time I ever seen you wrestle. That was the first time? Yeah. Oh, so you got to see me kill Evie with yeah, a black I, hole I, for the I first time? I was watching the door because that was my job. I was watching the door. That was my first job in TOS as a doorman. So I'm sitting there watching the door, making sure that nobody bumps into the hard cam. And I look to the side, and I look back, and I see Evie in the air. And then I fucking see you slam her on the ground. I thought she was dead. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Who is this guy? Now, that's 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 one thing that no one ever forgets about me, and I love that is the black hole slam that I hit. And I that is, like, my favorite thing to do, honestly. I it's like so I've fun. been giving you credit for that, like, ever since that day. I feel like every time I see you, I bring that shit up. But, like, that, actually, that was crazy. I forgot that was the first time you saw me. That's wicked funny, man. And actually, didn't you, after the fact, you went and uh, you actually popped up at Providence Wrestle Party, right? Yeah. Yeah, you did. That was good. See, that's – that's. Um, I remember, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with you, just, like, whether it be – you know, general topics, this, that, the other thing. But, like, you guys, you are always in a car with, like, five other dudes at all times, I feel like. And you guys got a little crew going on there. You got, like, any any stories you want to tell the crowd about any maybe fun fun little car stories? Because those are always good. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel like every time we're in the car, it's just people just – we're just ripping each other. Uh, like any chance, you know, anytime somebody has a hot dog or something like that, it's like, oh yeah, the hot dog. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> I think it's just any chance that anybody gets to like do something to another person is it just they take it. So like if you're sleeping in the car, it's over. Like one time I, I was coming, you mean, you mean I was the coming out of my house and and Sean, like from the Haven, he's he's notorious for just falling asleep. Like yeah, he, that guy can he can sit and fall asleep anywhere like a like an old man. I noticed. So I get out of the car. I mean, I get out of my house to go in the car, and he's just sleeping on the freaking uh, on the door. So I just come up to the door and just open it. <laughs> but but it was it was horrible because he dropped his wallet. So we had to go all the way back to my house. Oh so man, yeah, it was it was horrible. But no, nah, that's worth it though. I mean, you know, actually, it's funny you say that because like those are the only whenever I see Snapchats from any of those guys in the car, it's always Jay and Sean passed out. Always, like it's always those two. They're sleeping. Yeah, I he's, he's how night, night, bro. night night. Yeah, not yeah, nighty night. night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but now, um, I gotta ask too. Okay, sorry. Okay. Is there anybody 
on the independent scene that if you had a chance, give me a list of maybe three, three people on the independent scene that you would love to work and give me reasons why. I'm kind of curious. I want to know where your brain goes. Um, definitely, uh, Lee, Lee Moriarty. I think that he's just, I like, I like the, like he's, he's, he's to the ground. You know, I feel like I can do some cool shooty stuff with him. Yeah. But I think that will be cool as far as like a match where I get to like, you know, actually do some, some amateur wrestling shit. Yeah. Um, I already wrestled Sammy, but I would love to wrestle Sammy again, just because when I wrestled Sammy, I was not as, as like experienced as I am now. So like I wrestled Sammy probably like, like, like four months into being a, a wrestler. And it, we just, I don't know. I feel like we have good chemistry. So I definitely want to do that again. Cause we haven't even wrestled in training since like we haven't done it. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, we barely even like, we'll probably get in there and we'll chain for like a half minute. And then, yes. like, we'll both go our separate ways and keep it at that. Like, so Sammy is definitely another one. And um, huh. my third one is hard. I feel like I got a lot of people that I love, I'd love to wrestle. Like, I really like Byron Reed. Um, I like Alec Price, uh, Brad Hollister, Big Bacon. Yeah. No, I feel like, you know, I feel like you and Alec Price would probably tear it up. Honestly. Alec Price is so good. Every time I watch him wrestle, it's just, I'm Dude, not excited. You know, the whole family loves Alec Price. They just, they just went to, uh, to Dear Norma, and that was the only person that they were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't care about you. They care about him. But uh, it's like, yeah. the first time first time I ever met Alec Price, I remember it pretty vividly. It was actually, I forget exactly where in Mass, but we were doing like a taping show. And um, this was, I'd like to say, right within in my first year of wrestling. And um, it was him versus Channing Thomas uh, for the like opening match deal. They were still both pretty much training. And... Um, I remember seeing him and I was like, I didn't think, truth be told, didn't really think, I mean, his athleticism was awesome, but I didn't think much of what he was doing. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, it is what it is. Another dude got to know him a little better because he was doing this thing called Showcase Pro Wrestling. And then out of nowhere, he just blew up. Like out of nowhere. And then I started watching his newer stuff and I understood why he blew up because he, his brain must have did like a 180 or something like that and completely flipped. But like his work's unreal. You see, it's like, been good for me. I haven't seen anybody like, cause you know, I I'm like new to this. So I haven't seen anybody at like their, at their 1.0. You know, I haven't seen anybody in their, in their like beginning stages of like them being green and them learning. Like I came and it was just there, like they're polished, like they're already doing their thing. So every time I see them, they're just better than they were man. last time. So it's been great. Like Remind I, like I haven't had the chance to go like, like I haven't had another impression of somebody to see them and then for it to yeah. change. Like I've seen everybody at their. At their good, so it's. Been I get what you're saying. Good. If that's the case, remind me to send you uh, my first year stuff because you're gonna look at me very. <laughs> um, also, uh, if it's funny you would mention first year stuff. When I first came in, Christian Casanova was still doing the Thriller, like he was pretty much Michael Jackson, more or less. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that he did that or not, but like it yeah, was. I, I see, like I watch like old training days, and I see that, like that. that yeah. Cool, but... You see, when I see that, it's just like wow, like. I can't even believe like he did a whole switch like everything. Oh, yeah, like out of out of nowhere too. He straight he left for a few months, came back, and was just like surprise, I'm a superstar. Like, yeah. straight <laughs> but his work his work was always great. You know what I'm saying? Christian's work was always really good, but he just didn't have that full on connection until he went like you know Thriller Nova started doing all that stuff with you know what I'm saying? And like it just it was crazy how out of nowhere he just became like the guy. Now he's signed with WWE. Like that's that's crazy to me. Like yeah, that's literally insane, bro. Do you have any? Do you have any aspirations? Like where do you want to get to? If you had to pick a major company, like where do you think you fit best? Um, uh, that's hard because like obviously, obviously yep. WWE is where yep. the money is, and it's what I watched my whole life that you know inspired me to be a pro wrestler in the first place. But uh, like I don't even really watch a lot of New Japan, but I just want to go to the. To Japan in general, yeah. just because I just never been out of the country before. Yeah, so I think it'd just be cool. I, I just, I don't know. As as far as like being signed, I, it's not that I don't want to be signed, but I want to be able to go everywhere first. Like I want to be able to That's travel, good. learn from everybody I can learn from. I don't want to just like only go. To, I don't want to get signed to a place and like this is gonna be where I like learn and wrestle for the rest of my life. I want to be able to go out and and learn and of course. just train with everybody, wrestle everybody. So it's it's really like, I don't know. I just want to be able to make a living out of pro wrestling anyway. So Of course, man. I mean, that's uh, I feel like most of us, if not all of us, want the same, you know, same idea, especially if we're doing this. Like, don't get me wrong, dude. 
I, I don't tell people this a lot. If you're a promoter listening and you ever decide to book me, don't take this into consideration. But I would work for free. But that, remember, but like, because I love wrestling. But at the yeah. same time, you know what I mean? Like, you also got to remember, which I'm sure you know, you got to show your worth. And your worth is worth money if you put in your time, your effort, you put in all your extra money into doing these extra things like gear, props, this, that, the other thing. You got to know your worth too. So I completely understand where, you know, you want to make your money, you want to make your money. But I think going around the world first is your, it would be the best bet. And not even for the reason of like the experience and all that, but also the wrestling world is changing. And we all know that where doors are starting to open because of AEW. AEW and Impact are opening their doors. They're playing with New Japan now too. Hell, even WWE has Jericho going on the Broken Skull podcast while he's signed with AEW. That I would have never thought would happen. So yeah. like – the world is changing, and I think in a good way for wrestling. So yeah. hopefully in time, you'll be able to do that anyway and still be under contract with a major company and say, that's okay, I'm going to work this one next week. So, yeah, that'd be great. How do, you feel about, uh, how do you feel about that, by the way, the whole Jericho, Stone Cold thing? I don't know if you knew about that or not. but Bro, I think it's pretty cool. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to guess that like, this means like, they're going to have like, some type of a partnership. Like, I know right. Jericho has done a lot of work with them, obviously, for most of his career. Of so it's, it could just be a thing that is just open for him. You know, but and I mean, it is cool just to know that like they don't mind putting somebody that's not signed to them on one of their products because usually it would be like pulling teeth. Oh, dude. Oh, absolutely. You know, my, my one question that's going to come up this whole thing, are they going to mention AEW? Like, is it going to actually get like, you know how they do that? Like, they're like, oh, you can't say this word. You can't say this word because of competition. Yeah. I'm really curious if they're going to mention AEW because if you really think about it, man, AEW right now is, you know, half independent stars, half old WWE stars and that's yeah. a great thing but like at the same time where does that really take you from here because AEW I don't see as legitimate competition to WWE WWE has made so much money now at this point yeah that exactly. I, feel like, that I feel like they can afford a, a quote-unquote loss here and there you know what I'm saying it's not like it was with the Monday Night Wars but like, like it makes like competition makes them better like, I agree I agree the WCW they put out their their best work to compare yeah. to WCW. That's the stuff that everybody remembers. Even people in my generation swear they grew up in the Attitude Era for whatever reason. Even though it was like the Ruthless Aggression yeah, Era? Like they yeah. swear they grew up with Stone Cold on Raw every week. And I don't even know why, but like, like they really do think so. So like, everybody no, so remembers the Attitude Era, you know? I, I will tell you this though. Really growing up watching Stone Cold, like I'm telling you, that was my first, like when I first started watching, I was a WCW dude. And I remember being in like second, third grade talking to this dude, Billy, who I like, he was a friend of mine in that grade. And I remember him vividly because he was such a huge WCW fan. And he actually, in a way, got me into wrestling, even though I kind of liked it already. But he told me, he's like, oh, WCW is better than WWF and blah, blah, blah. So I started watching it. And um, I really got into WCW like heavy. But then I was like, oh, but WWF's also dope. So I was watching like every Monday. I was flipping back and forth between, you know, between commercials, hoping that I can catch a tail end before another commercial things like that. But like, I tell you, man, growing up in the attitude era was like, it was, it was sick. Like, you know, like looking back, I've watched a few of the episodes recently. They don't hold up as well as you'd think, but like being in that time, man, it was so good. Like I'm actually a little jealous. I'm a little jealous. You guys got the ruthless aggression era because I think that's personally probably the best era they've had. If I'm being real. Oh yeah. Like I feel like, I feel like my era of, of, of wrestling is, like the ruthless aggression area was just great. I feel like uh, they just they just did a lot of different shit. They did. We, they had, did. A lot of, we had a lot of guys that can go up for like that that greatest of all time conversation. Oh my god, yeah. And like, we had like a lot of guys that were like not necessarily at the tail end of their career, but they kind of like rejuvenated themselves to keep on going. Like even Triple H was still. Oh my god. Man, like the Undertaker was still around. So was, I feel like we got the best of both worlds right there. This was American Badass Taker at that point, right? Nah, he was just going back to the dead man. So just going back to dead man and ruthless yeah, aggression. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, man. I just, I just remember like watching, like it's it just all of it felt so, so gritty, but so real and like cool. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. I feel like wrestling nowadays, and I, this is my honest opinion. I think it's a little too orchestrated. Where like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't feel like there's a natural like grit to it as much as it used to be. And like, I know that's part of, you know, evolving and becoming overproduced because they have the money to do that now and they don't care, they will. But like, you know, I miss being able to watch and be like, you know, like, especially like Stone Cold and be like, this is just another dude. He's a, just a really cool another guy. You know what I mean? 
And like, I think that's a good reason why I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Kevin Owens. Cause he reminds me of just like, he's just like, I'm just another guy and I'm here to wrestle. And that's what it is. But in a good. Yeah. Sure. yeah it's tough though. Cause you know, like, like, uh, like well, that's the conversation that I've had a lot with like, with like slick. Cause you know, like, I just think that I could just be like, you know, just another guy and just fucking just wrestle because yeah. that's what I've been doing before this, you know, but like, yeah. it's, it's like not that simple. You know, you got to have something that, that helps you connect with the crowd and everything like that. So gimmicks is something that is just really tough for me. Yeah. I mean, look, like we've, we've had the conversation. I'll leave that for out of the podcast, but what you're doing is right right now. I say stick to what you're doing because it's working. So yeah. that's, all, that's all I'm saying. It, it is working from my perspective. I'm looking at it. I'm like, this guy's going to be fine. Um, I got to ask you a question about a few guys in the area, and I want you to give me the, your opinions on them real quick. This is kind of more of a name game thing. This is actually something that Leo Connors does. I don't do it often, but I do want to get your opinion on some people. All right. All right, so we'll do that. All right, let's go with uh, Lucas Chase. We'll start with Lucas Chase, my guest yesterday. Uh, Lucas Chase. Did you know that he was a that he was the top Coney uh, guy in a uh, Sonic? I I did I did hear about his Sonic expeditions. Yeah. So if, if you go to Sonic and you go to Footlong Coney on the menu, it's actually a picture of a hand holding the Coney, and it's actually his hand. <laughs> it's just it's just what I heard. I think it's on his Instagram actually. He's like you know, <laughs> Sonic advertisement, and it's just his hand with the Coney with Jeez. the chili cheese. Right. Yeah, it's 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 great stuff. I was very happy for him. I know he was looking for that endorsement, you know. My God, dude! All right, what about Stevie Legend? Stevie Legend, he's coming along. He's definitely coming along. My boy, I think he's just probably just been doing it just about as long as me. Yep. So I haven't really seen much of him. I seen him in XWA, and he trained with us a few times. So he's definitely coming along. He, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of work to do, and uh, but that's not a bad thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially because people are helping him, and they're not just saying Stevie, get out of here, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's that's really helpful because if you do that, he's never going to learn. You know yeah, exactly. So, I was uh, uh, talking to him uh, the other day. He actually had a pretty good match with uh, with Danny Adam. They both were like, I don't know, they they both had the crowd like. No, I noticed that they really did have the crowd. I was actually, I was like, I was on commentary that whole night for that, and I was just like watching. Yeah. I'm like, wow, I'm like Stevie's got a Stevie's got a following, and the best part is the the, the girls love him apparently. So like, I was just like, this yeah, it was crazy. awesome. I was watching it, and, you know, I wasn't really like expecting too much because you know Danny is he's a tag wrestler, and then you know he's wrestling Stevie, and Stevie has been having a hard time for the past couple of weeks. But they yeah. just, I don't know, they just gelled. It was awesome. They did gel. I agree. That was actually really fun. Uh, you know, we'll go with that, Danny Adam. Danny Adam, bro, he's definitely coming along too. My first yeah. impression of him, he was tagging with my boy El Jabroni. And I don't think they really worked too much as a tag team. Yeah. They were just like, I don't know if they just hadn't had enough tag matches under their belt, but it just wasn't really like wasn't really gelling like as much as it could. But he's with a uh, guy, and I feel like they were like they balance each other out perfectly. Well, him and him and Guy are legit friends, and that matters yeah. a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that that makes that literally makes a tag team better. Like Trey and Jay, we were talking about Waves and Curls. They are yeah. legit like good friends, and that makes that happen. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, they uh they've been doing good. They get better every week too. They've been wrestling the Haven and shit. So yeah, it's been cool to see. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's see who else we got. What about okay, Jose Perez? Jose Perez. Oh, bro, he's great. He's great. Every time I every time I see him, he gives me some type of advice that helps me get better. And this, like, he's awesome. He's helped me grow so much in like my limited time being there. It's it's been awesome. What about um? What about Ichiban? Ichiban, yeah, he's all right, man. You know, I, I hated him at first because you know I was I was Tesla Strength Rookie of the Year, so you know I thought like, oh, yeah, I was Tesla Strength Rookie of the Year, so I thought that meant you know slick, you know he was gonna give me the chance to you know go on and. And get some work in, but instead, this guy Ichiban just comes along, and all of a sudden he's getting booked. So I know what's going on. I never seen him at training, but apparently he's a test of strength trainee. Well, Jordan, I, you so, know, I, Jordan. So I, I, don't I honestly think that. that I thought he was Sammy Diaz at first. He does have the same build as Sammy Diaz, but, right. but then they wrestle, so that kind of takes it out of the, yeah, it takes it out of the equation. Well, so what I, if what, I, if, what if Sammy Diaz is just playing mind tricks? So what if it is Sammy Diaz and use somebody else in Ichiban's mask? It could be true. It could be true. You know, I actually heard, I heard Ichiban, um, even though he's number one and number one in most of our hearts, yes. I heard he's actually number two in England. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't really I don't really follow English wrestling that much. You know, I heard that he came from Japan, but then I also heard that he came from, from Mexico. But then I yeah. also heard that he came on a train from Ecuador, but I don't even know how he did that. 
That's I don't even think that's, I don't even think that's a thing. No, it's not. That's very impressive. <laughs> yeah. So, so he's yeah. He's, he's nah, I mean, from, what, from what I heard, I heard Zack Saber Jr. and him at a match, and it was for the number one title. And I guess Zack yeah. Jr. won. So you know what? I, he just he just got his mask ripped off at uh, Dear Norma. Oh, I so saw I that. I think yeah. he's number two in Tessa Stream too now. Ooh. So, I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. Yeah, actually, I, I saw that. I I, I was. Uh, what do you think that? What do you think his like intentions were there? Because wasn't it the firm versus the Kowalski guys? Well, I know he was definitely trying to help Slick. Yeah. And Freddie, it just didn't work. Like it was actually the worst, the worst save attempt I've ever seen in my life. Like, like <laughs> he's way too nice of a guy. I'm just saying, if I was coming out there to help Slick and Freddie, I would have at least came out with a weapon or something. Like I'm not an idiot, you know. Why would I try and beat up three guys? Yeah, that's by fair. myself at 100 and. 40 pounds soaked in wet, you know? Well, I mean, the thing is, is, you know, Ichiban, Ichiban, I'm, I'm pretty sure is like at least 63 years old. So like, he's got experience, but. Look, 63 I, I, years of life and nobody told you that you don't pick a fight with three guys unless you got a weapon. <laughs> I'm just saying like, bro, what is that? He literally came out and thought he was going to give them the hands to death. God damn, dude. All right. Look, I got one last question for you that we're going to end this off on the right foot. All right. Okay. Do you have any goals within the next year? Is there any titles you're looking at? Is there anything you want to do? Is there anyone you, you know what I'm saying? Like, help me out here. Within the next year, is there, is there any goals you really want to accomplish? Well, I finally want to debut for Test of Strength. That's one of my goals. Um, another one of my goals, I would say probably just, I don't know, I just want to keep having more matches. Yeah. I just want to keep getting a lot of matches under my belt. Um, I want to try to train at, at least two more dojos. Okay. Anywhere, anywhere specifically you can think of that you'd want to go? Um, I mean, I haven't been to uh, I haven't been to uh, XWA for training yet. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, maybe like uh, Nepwa, that would be pretty cool. Oh, Nepwa would be great for you, honestly. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I just want to I just want to go out and just try to try to learn from like another perspective, just to see how how other people take wrestling. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's the thing about wrestling. That's the great thing is like, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's not my flavor of ice cream. But honestly, wrestling has at least 32 flavors of ice cream that you can work with. Yeah, I'm trying to find like uh, like what my flavor is. So it's been cool to just go around and like learn from different people and, and kind of like take what I like from one person and take what I like from another person and, you know, make it make it work for me. You know, I don't know if you've contemplated this, but I found out recently, I actually reached out for it myself. Um, Dan Storm has a virtual seminar that he does where he picks apart your match and he helps you out. And it's actually pretty pretty reasonable. Yeah, I actually saw that. I actually was thinking about doing that. You really should. I mean, honestly, I, I've, I've already talked to him myself. I've emailed him and stuff like that. I'm just wait, I'm waiting to uh, go back into the ring and have like a real one-on-one -on -one match so I can be like, okay, this is my work. Please help me out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, but I, I definitely would suggest doing that. 100%. Yeah, I definitely want to have one that I feel like is 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 good. Like, I don't yeah. want to give them a match where I feel like I already like. If I, I don't want to give them anything that I feel like I can critique myself. I got you. Know? you. Like, I, I don't want to do something and then like I don't know. I miss a drop kick and then he's like, you know, you well, you missed the drop kick. It was the shits, you know, because yeah. then because then I'm gonna just be like, damn, you know, so. I feel, you know what? Actually, I do have one more question. What's what's the most positive part that you've had so far in wrestling? What's your most positive experience you've had in wrestling so far, even if it's a general thing? Um, it's been awesome, bro. I I just been able to travel. I've been able to go around and just meet a bunch of people. I mean, uh, I I met Matt Taven, and like you know, I was a Ring of Honor fan. Yeah. So when I met Matt Taven, I was like kind of like, oh shit, like it's Matt Taven, because that was the first time I ever seen like a wrestler that I actually like, you know, like watched. Yeah, because like, I met Raven and I met D'Lo Brown. That was awesome because you know they're great guys in the business. But I didn't really grow up watching gotcha. them necessarily, so it wasn't like the same as when I saw Matt Taven in his fucking prime right in front of me. And then he actually like liked what I was doing, so it was cool. That that that's, that's awesome, man. I love that. That's great. You know, I gotta say real quick now that you said that D'Lo Brown, I actually have one quick story about D'Lo. This is a funny one. Um, over quarantine, I, I did a match. Uh, it was me versus Tommy Dreamer. Uh, I was actually me and Anthony Pena versus Dreamer Incredible. And um, so we did this whole tag thing, whatever. And we're sitting, all four of us around a circle, freaking just incredible, just cross legs, smoking a butt. We're all hanging out, shooting the shit in general before we even talk about the match. Out of nowhere, D'Lo Brown walks up. And I'm like, I didn't even know D'Lo Brown was here. Like, this is cool. Yeah. Like, like D'Lo Brown walks up, and I'm just in this circle. I'm like, this is so fucking cool. And we're talking, and he's talking about, like, 
he's like, oh, Tommy, you know, things just aren't the same like they used to be. You know, like back then we'd be hitting flights, we'd be getting drinks, blah, 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 blah. And now, like, I ordered a – he pretty much says, like, I ordered a dishwasher and I got to go home tomorrow and put it in for my wife. I don't even know who I am anymore. I'm like, like what? <laughs> Like, I'm like, this dude who's, you know, I was a bona fide Hall of Famer. I don't know if he's already in the Hall of Fame now, but D'Lo Brown, and he's just over there. He's like, yeah, you know, I got to go help my wife tomorrow. I'm like, this is so weird to be like from yeah. the outside watching them on TV to be in a literal, like, a legit conversation with them. I'm like, all right. Yeah, literally, like, like, all right. I went to the seminars, like, like, even I went to the Trevor Murdoch seminar. I remember growing up, I hated him when I was a kid. Like, yeah, it was not a redeeming quality about Trevor Murdoch. No. Was, <laughs> like, I used to like the villains. Like a lot. Like I was always a villain like kid. Yeah. But when when it was Trevor Murdoch and Lance K versus the Hardys, there was nothing in the world that could make me go, Oh, that was a nice that was a nice clothesline by by Trevor Murdoch. Yeah, it was nothing. Touché. Like I hated him. And when I met him, he was such a nice guy, bro. I was like so confused. I was just like, yo, what the fuck? Like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I really appreciate you coming on here today for being the first. The first person on the new Positive Wrestling Podcast. And yeah, that was um, awesome. Thanks, bro. I appreciate like, it. Legit, I, I appreciate you, man. You've always been really cool. You've always been, you know, you become a good friend of mine in the locker room. I like talking to you. I always like seeing you and keep up what you're doing because it's working for real. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me again. No, of course. And everybody else, remember, stay positive.